Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on industrial chemistry and in particular we'll be looking at the soap industry. So we've looked at in the previous lesson what the general process for making soap is and now we're going to look at how industry actually goes about producing soap. Okay. So industrial soap making. Industrial soap is formed by mixing blended fats, which could be tallow or coconut oil, with concentrated uh, sodium hydroxide. Steam jets are used to heat the mixture inside a high pressure vat called a kettle. So we call it a kettle, it's just a container. And this breaks the fats into fatty acids that react with the NaOH. So once we form the soap, so we went through the transesterification process last lesson. So you would have seen how the bonds break and the sodium bonds with the fatty acid and the OH bonds to the glycerol group. Well, once that's happened, we want to actually get the soap out. So we add hot brine, which is very salty water. Hot brine is added to the solution. And this saturates the solution with ions and essentially causes the soap to precipitate. Because the soap is less soluble when the solution is concentrated. So um, by adding this hot brine, we essentially precipitate out the soap. So it's called salting out the soap. And it forms this weird sort of curd-like structure. So when you know when milk goes bad, it forms those curds. Well, this is what we call soap curd. Uh, separates from the aqueous layer and can be pumped out of the kettle. So we can sort of just skim the, the soap off the top kind of thing by precipitating it out or salting it out. And we can skim the curds off and refine them again. So the glycerol in the aqueous solution is extracted because remembering that the glycerol probably bonds well with water since it has lots of hydrogen bonds um, and it's extractive because it has a lot of uses so glycerol is used in many things. Meanwhile the soap curd is washed to remove soluble impurities like salt or NaOH and the soap is vacuum dried and then processed into bars, flakes or powder. So we wash it uh, sounds kind of silly washing soap, but we wash the soap to remove the salt and also some of the sodium hydroxide um, and then we vacuum dry it so that we can then turn it into bars or flakes or whatever else form that we like our soap in. So the soap takes a few days to settle or cure and then we treat it cosmetically with perfumes or dyes to make them green or smell nice or things like that. Now, these added things like perfumes and dyes only change the smell and look. They don't actually change how effective it is as a cleaning agent. So when you do it in school, uh, it's very hard to extract the glycerol, so we just skip that step. Because glycerol bonds very strongly to water, so it would be a very difficult process to actually remove that glycerol from, from the water. So we just ignore that step for now. Instead of using high pressure and high temperature vats, the mixture is just boiled. Okay? So instead of using this super high pressure system, we just boil it. And oil is used instead of fat because it requires less heating. Because uh, fats would require lots of bonds to break, whereas oils have double bonds and triple bonds, which will make it easier to break um, later on. Now, safety. When you do this in your lab, you have to be aware of the safety. Sodium hydroxide that we use is very caustic, uh, so it burns. Okay? This means it can cause burns if it touches the skin. So you can see here the effect of sodium hydroxide on your skin. Now, as always, safety glasses and protective clothing need to be worn, and the sodium hydroxide should be handled and boiled with great care. So be very careful when dealing with this sodium hydroxide because it is very dangerous. Now, once you've made the soap, why don't we test it? Well, the soap that you make in school will still have traces of sodium hydroxide, so we can't use it to wash our skin because it'll dry it out. However, it should lather in water, so it should make bubbles and foam. So that's how we're going to test it. It won't lather, however, in hard water. So if we have a dilute solution of magnesium sulfate, it won't lather.
but it should lather in just distilled water. And there you see a little bit of lathering from the soap. Now, if we look at a school lab versus an industrial case, well, in a school laboratory, we use olive or coconut oil for the fatty acid, whereas in industry, we would blend oils and fats together. Okay? In the school laboratory, we'd use sodium hydroxide, uh, and in industry, we'd probably use a com combination of different things to maximize the process. Sodium, potassium, or ammonium hydroxide are common ones. The precipitating agent is the same for both cases, brine, hot water, hot salty water. And we don't neutralize it because we don't have time in school to do that. Whereas in industry, we want to get rid of that OH, so we would add a little bit of hydrochloric acid to, to just remove all of that OH, which would dry out our skin. Okay. So we've covered today in this lesson the industrial processes that go into making soap. So on top of that transesterification process that we looked at in the previous lesson, we're looking at the different aspects of soap making that, and the chemistry behind them that help to make soap the way it is. And so hopefully you've learned something about the soap industry. So we'll move on to the question segment and see if you can put all these things together. So sodium chloride is an important material in soap making. What is its purpose? Well, it's not to break fats into fatty acids. This process is carried out by boiling the fats or exposing them to steam. So this is just heat, okay? So it can't be D. To harden the liquid soap mixture into a solid, well, the, so the soap hardens as water evaporates from it, so that's not what sodium chloride does. To neutralize sodium hydroxide, well, we know sodium chloride is a neutral substance, so it won't neutralize sodium hydroxide. So the answer is A. Sodium hydroxide is used to salt out the soap curds or to precipitate out salt curds. So that's A. So which of the following materials is not used to make soap? Well, we've got sodium hydroxide we know is definitely used. Sterin we use as well. So sterin is used as a source of fatty acids. Sodium hydroxide is required to react with the fatty acid. Sodium chloride is used to salt out the soap from the mixture. So all we've got left is glycerol. And glycerol is just a byproduct of this reaction. So we take sterin, we react it with sodium hydroxide, and all we get out is soap and glycerol, and so glycerol is a byproduct. So we don't actually need it to make the soap, but it just comes out of the process. So B is our answer. Okay, so in this question, ethyl hexadecanoate is hydrolyzed in a hot sodium hydroxide solution. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. Okay. So here's our balanced equation. So Let's just ignore the rest of it and just look at this molecule. So here is the ethyl part, C2, eth meaning 2. And if we, look at an, if we look at ethane, you would have C2H6, right? Because that's what an alkane group is, 2N plus 2. So, but when you have an IL group, it means you've removed 1H. So we've removed 1H to get 5. So this means that this must be the ethyl group. Okay, so that's ethyl. So hexadeca is 16. So 1, 2, 14 times 1 is 16. Okay, so you've got 16 here. So this is your hexadecanoate here. And it reacts with your sodium hydroxide to give you... So we take, remembering that this is the this becomes the fatty acid group. So it becomes sodium hexadecanoate, which is this one. And the ethyl group bonds with the OH to give you ethanol. Okay? So we've got here we've got sodium hexadecanoate, and here we have ethanol. And that's the reaction for this particular process. So name the soap that forms, sodium hexadecanoate, as I mentioned. Sodium, 16 carbons, hexadeca. It's an alkanoic acid that's lost its hydrogen, so it's an anoate group. So it's hexadecan, an hexadecanoate. 
and the sodium at the front. Okay. Explain how this soap could be extracted from the mixture. Add hot brine to the solution, um, which forms the salt, uh, which makes the soap into curds and precipitate it out. Then filter at a suction pump and wash with warm water. So we just filter it out um, using, uh, in this case, a suck at a suction pump with some sort of filter. Okay. So question eight. Give a safety risk associated with soap making and suggest a safety precaution to minimize the risk. Well, handling the sodium hydroxide used in soap making is dangerous as the substance is caustic and very corrosive. To minimize risk, uh, safety goggles, protective clothing, um, such as gloves and lab coats should be worn at all times. Okay? Additionally, its dissolution in water is very exothermic. So when combining sodium hydroxide with water, it should be added in small amounts to large volumes of water. So this is similar to sulfuric acid. Just add little bits to big volumes of water and you'll be safe. Question nine, describe two differences in, uh, between soap, making soap industrially and making soap in a school laboratory. Well, industrially, after the soap has been removed from the aqueous mixture, the mixture is processed to extract the glycerol, which we don't do because we can't. Industrially manufactured soap is treated with hydrochloric acid in order to remove any leftover sodium hydroxide. Because remembering that the hyd sodium hydroxide makes it a drying agent and it kind of irritates people's skin. So we want to get rid of it as much as possible. Neither of these processes are carried out in school labs. One, this one because it's difficult and this one because uh, it's not necessary for our, for our studies. Okay, so that wraps up today's lesson on industrial soap making. So we've looked at how soaps are actually made in industry and what processes go into making the soap um, usable for humans. So I hope you've learned something and I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.